Okay, so I was just reflecting on the example that young women need of a woman who holds herself to a higher standard, who moves with more class and coof um, in spaces where others may not be acting that way. And it, you know, it's not just about appearance things, but in the way that she thinks, in the way that she views the world, her values and things like that. Young women need to be able to see some a woman do that and stand in her truth and stand in what is good in them environments. And understanding that you can have higher values and morals and hold yourself to a different degree than certain rooms you may enter due to it being just your environment. That's where you, li you, you know, you young, you around your family, you around your friends, you at your schools, you don't really have choices of these environments. But to know better and do better and move in it confidently and not feel out of place, like they have to compromise themselves in order to to feel comfortable in their surroundings, but to know to that they can just remain in themselves and hold themselves to, their high, to those higher standards and move in those ways, which will help take them from certain, from, from those lower level quality rooms and environments and people. It's gonna help place them into the rooms with people who are like them and going above. So that's just something that I learned and, you know, just starting to move around a little bit more and speak on this topic of polygyny and you know, going, you know, just being more vocal about it and entering into rooms where everybody is not thinking and talking like me, but staying within myself. So, you know, I'm outside, so, you know, it get a little crazy out here, but I know my morals and my values and I can't be compromised about the rooms that I walk in. And I can do that without wagging my finger having a scrawled up face, like I can come in there being a light by simply being myself. Mixing and mingling to a degree, but remaining in myself, holding on to my values. Being an example to somebody else who's sitting in a room watching, like all oh, this madness going on and you, 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 you like this, you different. You, you don't belong in these rooms. For somebody to be able to see that. Um, and that really just made me think about a moment being in school um, I had a rowdy fifth grade class. I went to Wade Park, Wade Park Elementary, the real one, not that fake one that's up there right now. But I went to Wade Park and I was in this real rowdy, rowdy, rowdy fourth and fifth grade class, but this is probably fifth grade. But the class is going crazy, just, you know, doing their own thing, fourth grade actually. Um, before Akron was our teacher, she was a cool little African type lady. She was really cool. If y'all know her, find her funny. But, um, Real rowdy class, always had substitutes in and out. And one specific substitute said to me, you're different. In this room full of chaos where everybody is jumping around, acting crazy, doing whatever, you sitting here doing your homework. You do, you're doing your work and you're in your own zone and you're not being carried in by it. I like that. You're different. And she walked away. So that's something that was imprinted in my mind young, but it has taken me until these last few years of my life, you know, coming into my thirties, getting well into my thirties now, that I'm really understanding what she meant and to be able to walk in it, really recognizing what that message was and really learning to walk in it. So, you know, you're gonna catch me outside and see me talking and moving around with people and just know I'm gonna always move with love and respect and I'm gonna remain myself. Um, but we got a message we gotta get out here, so we ain't compromising. <laughs>